Hey, let me check in with the Fullness of Time by Kate Wilhelm, a 2012, I think it might just be an audiobook, science fiction short story. It's three hours long, so it's it's very much like a story or a novella, probably novella length. And I thought I would try and practice my speaking while because today is just how it's gone. I'm just I'm going to do this and I know I'm not going to get another chance to do anything particularly productive so why not work on my speaking and also I thought this was not a bad story to check in on it is talk it's focusing on the Granville's Granville 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 family where Hiram Granville the uh, now deceased patriarch is the Leonardo of his time has put has filed a thousand patent pat pat patents patents on inventions on scientific discoveries that always seem to scoop people who are also doing it which i mean in the realm of science people are always um there, there's oftentimes people are working on the same stuff at the same time and there's a bit of a race at the end. It's like it was going to be one person who is going to come up with CRISPR, for example. I've just read the Codebreaker. And it was, yeah, it was probably a kind of a question of exactly who was going to get there first. Now, the thing with Hiram is he seems to be doing it with actually no prior research, evidence of actual doing the basic science or anything like that. So there's, there's that. And then he has a son, John, who is a, the financial whiz, who is, I think, in his 60s now, who has never lost a cent of money, always buys or sells well, well ahead of the market, always, like in a way that is mathematically impossible. No one does this. No one does this. So that is the family. They are being investigated by Kat, a investigative reporter, Mercy the viewpoint the viewpoint character who is the researcher and cracker jack who seems to be the he's the he's the tech whiz he's the maybe third second story guy who is is there to you know kind of get stuff done and you know they quickly uncover all this stuff and it seems that the there's this they have fit some kind of epilepsy in the family or narcolepsy where the where Hiram and John, and it turns out uh, that uh, I think John's son, Carrie, fall asleep for several hours, just unexpectedly, like just fall over, like asleep or a fit for several hours. Then they wake up and they're, they're, they are, they are discombobulated for three hours and then they are, they're good to, they're good to go again. The grandmother was, who married Hiram, would would immediately take him after he had one of these fits and grill him and and ask him questions and questions and questions for hours afterwards to brief them and it seems that this is where all the information comes from which cat uh, immediately kind of comes with the well and, and this is early on in the story come comes up with the idea that they're obviously seeing the future that that this is what is happening they they can see the future and indeed there's a story of little hiram coming in to his is it a nanny or a or the housekeeper who's got all these papers and it's like i can't get them get, get them shut and it's like you know how how you know i can't get it shut it's like well why don't you just pin them shut and he she laughs at him and he comes back with a twisted up piece of wire uh a paper clip which um which i think the high room calls a paper pin but it's one of these things of like, okay, well, this was actually here beforehand, but they probably would have never seen it before. Never, someone in this village would never have seen it. I don't know. That's kind of, it's a bit of a weak example. Maybe it's supposed to be weak because maybe we're giving ourselves wiggle room. But yeah, so the the story seems to be just going out from the, 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 the going out from the possibility, the, 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 the theory that they can see in the future. And now it's maybe it, it's what the, the the so it's like it's not a mystery that's going to suddenly get re revealed later in the story. It's more like what are the consequences of getting to see in the future? 
and uh, it doesn't seem that any of them have particularly happy lives. They made a shit ton of money, but somehow they don't. They can't see where the money is going. They're wondering, is this a gene? There, there's questions about like, well, is you know, is this a gene that's kind of going to self extinction? Like that, there there isn't going to be issue. There isn't going to be um, more 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 of them. Or you know, where are they going? There seems to be a daughter who's gone missing that they can't see that is dead. So it seems to be much more of a story about tracing down the possibilities of things. It's told in a fairly blunt, seems like a blunt style. I mean, it's a novella, so we don't have time to kind of hint around at stuff. God, one of my lights is smelling like it is really burning or it's cooking something that I should really take a look at because it sounds, I'm afraid it's going to catch on fire. That's distracting me because it's like we're getting like burning smell in here, which is not good. So, yeah, I think that's all I have to say at the moment. I'll have to think about, yeah, I, I'm not, the, the way it's told is efficient. I will say it's efficient and that, you know, the, the, the reporter characters are ruthless. They're, they're not made out to be nice people. They're, they take advantage of one guy they interview, basically plying him with booze to basically kind of get him to crack and to open up, really flatter him, do all the kind of manipulative stuff that a reporter would do to get the story without particularly caring about the person they're getting the story from. So, yeah, yeah, efficient. I like that there's not, the characters are not likable. They've, uh, Mercy has gotten into the car with this youngest generation uh, fellow, Carrie, who desperately just wants to escape. You can tell that he's he's basically being held, held kind of by his 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 mother, by uh, th those around him. You know he's got protectors who are more jailers than protectors, and he wants to get free. And Mercy's like, I'm not here to get you free. You know I'm probably here to pump you for information and then deliver you back into the hands of Leon, your minder here because these are very powerful people who would destroy me if I tried to do anything and they destroy me and then you'd end up back in the thing back in their hands so it's not it, you can't you can't blame her for not particularly being tempted to try and save the poor poor guy who's very clueless and very much kind of the spoiled princeling in a way spoiled princeling but also maybe imprisoned princess more imprisoned narrow narrowed princess as well yeah all right i will leave it there and go have some lunch and see if stuff is burning no ums no ahs